All right, amen, amen, amen. Welcome amen. to Thursday night Bible study, praise and preaching. We're going to go ahead and get started with a very quick word of prayer and then get into our time together. Gracious and eternal God, our Father, Lord, we're thankful for another daytime opportunity to gather in your house. We've come tonight, Father, to worship you, worship you in various ways, worship you through song and dance. But more importantly, Father, worship you, or I should say equally as important to God, worshiping you through the word. Pray, Father, that you will speak to our hearts and our minds. Speak, God, until we listen and are made better, stronger, smarter, and braver. Uh, we pray for all things. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, come on, y'all. Let's get up on our feet. Get, get some blood circulating as we uh, offer praise to our God tonight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We can't live without His love. And we're grateful tonight for the love of Jesus because without that love, we would be lost in this world. But thanks be to our God for a God who loves us without limit. I mean, a grateful. For the unlimited, unconditional love of God. It is so rich, it is free, and it is mighty, and it is just something that we can't ever fully appreciate, but we can certainly continue to try uh, and thank God for it. And so I'm grateful on tonight. Um, we're going to do things a little bit different. Uh, even though it is praise and preaching, I'm not going to preach. Uh, Lady K is actually our scheduled preacher, um, but she's going to come down later uh, during our time together and offer uh, what the Lord has given to her. So, in the meantime, you stuck with me. And so we're going to uh, talk a little bit about uh, May is Mental Health Month. And so God laid on my heart to kind of continue in that conversation. I know that uh, Reverend Dwyer uh, in one of our Bible studies talked a little bit about uh, Mental Health Awareness Month and, and shared uh, from the Word of God. And so in that vein, I'm going to continue uh, that conversation. So uh, some of it may uh, be repetitive. Uh, some of it you may have heard. Others, again, God's Word is active and living. And so we always can get a fresh revelation uh, from his word. Uh, so God reminded me of something that uh, I that he told me that, that I shared with you um, a couple of years ago. And the thought, uh, the thought was and still is God's wisdom leads to wellness. You remember when I was telling you how God's wisdom leads to wellness? Um, I want us to kind of, we're going to hover around that, that topic, that, that thought, because, again, mental health is a part of that wellness that God's wisdom leads to. We, we often talk heavily about our physical health, right? We, we want to live um, good lives, and, and, and we want to, you know, take care of our physical bodies, right? It is the temple of the Lord, and we talk a lot about watching what we eat, and, you know, getting exercise and, and doing all of those sorts of things and taking vitamins. I mean, every day now I take vitamins. <laughs> um, uh, and thank God for gummies because back in the day, you know, <laughs> there was no gummy. You had that hard, and they called it a chewable, but it really wasn't chewable. You know, you had to, you know, chase that for something. Um, but nowadays, you know, they're, they've made it more appealing. Right, for us to, to be conscious about our physical health. And that's great, and we should, and the Bible talks about it. Um, but I think we as a church, meaning the, the, the universal, um, could do better at uh, addressing uh, mental health, our mental health, and, and even having conversations about it. And for, for a long time, it's been a, a taboo subject, right? It's been an issue that we kind of wanted to sweep under the rug. And no disrespect to anybody, uh, any you know particular ministries that 
um, view it as, you know, sort of a, a demonic issue only. Um, Pastor Jay, right, I don't see it as exclusively a demonic issue. I think that it can uh, be a demonic issue, but I don't, I don't think mental health challenges are purely demonic. Uh, I think it's a spiritual issue, right, because everything that is manifested in the earth realm comes from the spirit realm, right? So those things show up in our physical, tangible world, but they are a result of or a consequence of that which has occurred in the spirit, right? With me? Yes, no, baby? Yes. Amen. So, um, the thought came to me again about how we can sort of help ourselves um, to endure some of the challenges that we face on a regular, consistent, and dare I say daily basis. There, our world is, is so consumed with, with hatred, um, with war, with violence, racism, bigotry, sexism, and a whole bunch of other things that impact our existence. And the thing is, we have to wake up, well thank God, that he wakes us up. Amen? Amen. Thank God that he wakes us up in the world um, that he had created and established um, and that he gives us opportunity to live in the world and try to rightly represent him. And that's something that we get to choose and decide to do every single day that he grants us permission to wake up, right? So it's a conscious choice. But there are so many things that's battling against us. And again, these things show up in our physical world, but they're a result from the spirit. The, the enemy's engagement against God's people has been going on since the beginning of time, right? And that's not going to stop. But God has given us resources. God has given us tools. God has given us agency over our mind. And so it's important that we understand those things that are going to be helpful to us as we move forward in this life. So, um, we're going to bounce around the scripture, so get your Bible and just be ready to turn and go with me as we kind of survey um, God's resource, the, the Word of God, to us. We'll start off in Proverbs. Proverbs 4. Five and I should have got my glasses. Sorry, y'all watching. This is real life. Grandpa. Them letters is just Grandpa. It's small. <laughs> Proverbs chapter four. We're going to start at verse five. And I just want to read the A clause of five. And then we're going to skip down to verses 23 through 27. This is the New International Version. So it's Proverbs chapter 4, starting at verse 5, that A clause. And then we'll run down um, to verses 23 to 27. It says, get wisdom, get understanding. My son, pay attention to what I say. Turn your ear to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Keep your mouth free from free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Amen. So, this is the sage. This is, uh, many believe, Solomon's instructions. And he starts off telling the reader, the hearer of this, uh, of this 
this word that wisdom is chief and key in your living for God. Right? Wisdom is what's going to help you in this life as you journey through it. And so he's, he's, he's saying to them to really pay attention to what he's saying. He's acting as an instructor, as almost like an educator. He's giving this lecture. Um, he says, don't let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. Now, can somebody tell me why is it important to keep God's word in our heart? Yes. So that we may not sin against them. Yes. What else? As a reference point, yes. Anyone else? An example of how we should live. Examples, okay. It gives you a, um, a reminder of what God's done and His power. Right. Similar reference, reminder, yes, sir. So we're we're so prone uh, to to be evil, think evil, act evil, believe, I guess. Uh, and uh, so keeping God's word in your heart uh, is is a way to. Uh, Minimize that and, and keep yourself on the path of, of righteousness. Yes, right. It's a reminder that we're not in, in authority over ourselves. It's God that's in authority. Right, and I'm going to draw from the text. The next line says, for, for they are life to those who find them and health to one's whole body. Right? So it actually acts as a life preserver. The, the word of God, right? The, the wisdom of God acts as a life preserver so that when our propensity to sin and our propensity to do evil uh, rise up, that word comes to check us, right? Um, I, always, I, I I just, it's, it's funny because, you know, as a little kid, I think I've shared this before. I used to steal quarters, uh, and um, yeah, I, I would I would sneak out, and uh, my parents had a change jar, and I liked the big nickel. <laughs> I would steal the quarters, and um, I thought I was you know getting away with it. But there was always this little voice telling me, you know what you're doing is not right, and. Uh, the voice said, you're going to get in trouble. But I did not hide that word in my heart. Right? I just did whatever it is I wanted to do and then ultimately ended up, uh, yes, getting caught and suffering the consequences. My mom whooped me from like that morning to that evening. And then my dad came in and finished it off because that's how parents did back in the day. Um, but, but yes, it's the word of God, right? The instructions that He provides us, His with, excuse me, His wisdom acts to preserve our life, to protect our life, and actually brings health to our not only our our physical body, but to our mental body, right? To our mind. Because the next line says, "Above all else, <coughs> do what? Guard your heart." Now, when you look at that word heart, you can also substitute mind. Because in, in, in that day, in, in the ancient world, heart and mind were so interconnected, right? And you've heard me, I've, I've said this, and I, I still stick by it, right? The heart is the one that influences and impacts the mind, right? Because we don't necessarily make the decision solely or purely of our mind, but the heart it is, is what really gives that information, right? It's what directs the mind. It's what says, this is what you should do, because what's here, right, is going to drive what's up here, right? They may wrestle with each other occasionally. You may think about something else, right, and want to do something else, but ultimately you're going to do what the heart says. So that's why the, uh, the sage is saying, you want to make sure that you take care of this because this is what really, the heart and mind, that's what's going to steer you along the way. That's where you make 
you know, choice and decision. That's, that's where you say yes and no, right? So it's important um, that, as we all said, we keep that word there as a reference point, as a reminder, as, as, as a, a defense mechanism against evil, as, as a, again, a reminder that we're not in charge, right? And that every single day, we have to choose to submit ourselves, to surrender ourselves to the will of God, right? This, this quarter, we're, we're talking about what? Obeying God's will, right? Obeying his will. But we gotta choose to do that. Right? Every, every, God showed me and, and said every, every decision is, is meaningful. Every decision that we make, put that down, is meaningful. And we can't take for granted the choices that we make thinking that, oh, this is simple and it doesn't really impact or affect someone else. It does. I, I didn't really think about it until God brought it to my attention. Even the very clothing that we choose that day is significant and important. What we choose to eat that morning is significant and important. Right? The route that we go to work that day is significant and important. Right? Every single action that we take, every thought, every word, every step, it is important. So don't just think that, oh, no, because somebody's watching you. Somebody's listening to you. Somebody is taking careful, paying careful attention to your living. And again, choosing, uh, making choices about their own life based on what we, we do and say and how we represent the Lord. So again, it's important that we guard our hearts, guard our minds, because that is how we safeguard our mental health, right? Doesn't mean that we're not gonna have, be frustrated at times. It doesn't mean that you won't be sad or sorrowful. It doesn't mean that you won't have times where you feel worry or doubt or be anxious. Why? Because we're human. And that is native to the human experience. But what it does say is that God's given us the tools, the resources to address it and overcome it. Right? So when Paul said, don't be anxious about anything, but in everything, uh, by, uh, with, with thanksgiving, uh, by prayer and petition, make your request known to God. Right? He wasn't saying that you won't be anxious ever. Right? Because... Again, you're human. He's saying, don't make anxiety your home. Don't make that your address. Don't make that the place that you reside. Right? He's saying that if you trust in God, right, if you believe God, the antidote to anxiety is the, at the end of it, the peace of God. Right? Prayer and petition, make your request known to God, and the peace of God. Right? Guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Right? I'm getting a little ahead of myself, but you understand. We're, we're together, right? Mm -hmm. So then he says, keep your mouth free of perversity. Uh, now here's a word that you don't often hear. Uh, forwardness. F-R-O-W-A-R-D N-E-S-S. Forwardness. Or crookedness. It's, a, it's an archaic word. I see your face. It's archaic. That's when I looked it up, it says an archaic word. We don't use that pro word. Uh, it just sounds funny. Mm -hmm. But it's crooked, right? So keep your mouth free of crookedness or fraudulent speech. It's, it's election season, right? It's, it's, it's election season, right? 2024. And, and so there's people who are up for re election. Offices that are being voted on and politicians are vying for votes and some of them are not keeping their mouth free of perversity. Mm -hmm. Their speech is fraudulent and crooked 
and, and ultimately what, what, the, what the writer is saying here is that if, if, if we are truly um, to be wise, right, wisdom uh, of God does not lead others astray, including ourselves, right? So the words that we say are a representation of what we believe and how we live, right? So what co what's coming out of our mouth, right? It's coming from the heart and the mind. That's, we, when we say what we say, we're saying, this is who I am, this is what I represent. So he said, you need to keep yourself away from perverse, being perverse, being fraudulent. Keep corrupt talk from your lips, right? That's wickedness, that's evil. We shouldn't be bad-mouthing anyone. We can have our opinions about the way in which people act, but we should not publicly be pulling people down and, and what did, what did uh, First Lady Obama say? When they go low, we go high, right? We shouldn't be going low with them, right? So if they're low, we shouldn't go low just so we can get even with them. No. So keep our mouth free of perversity. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Right? Fix your gaze directly before you. It's a sad state, but often many of us walk around like this. Right? Because we're so consumed with this little thing. Right? It's a mini computer in our pockets and when we don't pay attention to the wisdom of God it's like us looking down trying to navigate where we're going and if you're always looking down if you're not looking straight ahead if your gaze isn't on the wisdom of God then you're subject or liable to injury not only to yourself but to others I don't know how many times I've had somebody like, hey, 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 look up. <laughs> or vice versa. I've had to say that too. I'm walking looking at them. I'm just saying, look at them. They're about to run right into the wall. <laughs> We're about to run into that garbage can. Or they're walking directly in my path. And I'll sometimes I'll purposely wait till we're like within a foot of each other and say, hey, you might want to, you know, look up. Because people think they have a, a sense of spatial awareness, like my peripheral vision gives me help. And it's like, no, 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 it's not. Because you was two seconds from bumping your head up against that pole right there. So keep straight. Keep, Paul said, uh, uh, looking unto him, the perfecter of our faith, right? So fix your gaze directly before you. Give careful thought to the paths for your feet and be steadfast in all your ways. Do not turn to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Now he's not saying that if you go that that if we go right or left, that's necessarily evil. But what he's giving uh, instruction is if if God tells you to go straight, right? Literally, this whatever the straight path is, maintain that pathway because in your living. Left may look more appealing. Right may look faster. But if God is saying, go this way, then we have to listen and trust God to see us through this way. Rather than try and usurp God's instruction and say, hey God, I know you told me to go straight, or I know you told me to go this way, but listen, this way, it just looks dangerous. It doesn't look safe. It doesn't look like this is where you're leading me, God. So because I don't think you're leading me there, I'm going to deviate from your plan and trust in my own wisdom, and hopefully everything works out. Or we try and bargain with God and say, I know this ain't the way you told me to go, but forgive me, Lord, I'm going to do it anyway. And then we fall on our face and suffer something that we didn't have to suffer. We end up upset and mad at God. Like, God, you knew I was going to do that. Why you just ain't? 
Why you didn't just put up a roadblock so I couldn't do it? <laughs> just because, right? We weren't steadfast in our ways. So again, God's wisdom leads to what? Wellness. Right? And, 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 and I'm, I'm talking about his wisdom not only protects our physical wellness, it protects our mental wellness. The Bible also says this. Can you turn to uh, Luke 11, 34 and 35? It says, your eye is the lamp of your body. When your eyes are healthy, your whole body also is full of light. But when they are unhealthy, your body also is full of darkness. Now, in that piece of scripture, Jesus was talking about the Pharisees and giving them an illustration of their current condition. He was trying to let them know that, number one, he was the light of the world. He was and still is. But also, you can tell the health and wellness of an individual spiritually through their eyes. Because the eye gate is where we receive everything, right? That's where, where we, we, we take in and make evaluation about things, right? Think about it like this. We eat with our eyes before we eat with our mouth. Am I right about it? Let me bring you a plate of slop. And it can smell as good as whatever. Your favorite thing. But let me bring it to you and it looks messy. It looks unappealing. Right? Are you going to eat it? You're going to refuse it because of how it looks. Right? So we make decisions here. Right? And, and these Pharisees Right, had made decisions based upon the appearance of Christ and not uh, the truth of Christ. And so he said, listen, I can tell you right now, you're, you're in darkness. You can tell, we can tell when we are encountering people when they're not healthy, right? Here, physical, wherever. Because there's a certain countenance that, that's upon them. I'm not saying like in the movies where they have that like glow, right? You ain't Leroy. Come on, y'all got, got that reference. Right? Who's that? <laughs> Brad, you don't know about Bruce Leroy? No. Shogun! The last one. Show, show up, Shogun Hall. Huh? We're gonna have to, 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 we're gonna we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, we're gonna have to, what year was that again? 80, 80, 80, 80 something, right? Yeah, I was a, I was a youngster. But again, we, but we can tell. We can, we can honestly tell the health of an individual by, by looking at them, right? And seeing if they're in that, if they're, if they're uh, in need of support or if they are lacking, right? So it's important that we are connected to the light and the light is Christ exactly right so it's important that we remain connected to the light to the source of light so that we can ourselves be lit and I'm not talking about you know <laughs> the other kind of lit but lit for Christ Amen. and no you can't be drunk and talk about I'm lit for Christ no but Filled with his spirit, right? Filled with his word. Ready and, and able to, to draw off of it, right? We should be feeding and feasting off of his word. And that's what he really was saying here. When your eyes are healthy, when you're feeding and feasting off of him, your whole body also is full of light, right? When you're in relationship with Christ, when you're in connection with Christ, your body, and again, we're talking about mental health, your mind is strong. But when you're unhealthy, your body is also full of darkness. When you are disconnected from your source, right? 
when you're disconnected from that which gives you life, well, then you automatically feel it, right? You feel drained. You feel exhausted. You feel depleted. Things that would normally make you happy don't are making you sad, right? And and, and you can tell it's it's spiritual malnourishment. David said it like this way. It's in Psalm 119.37. He said, Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Now, worthless things mean meaning things that, that mean me no good. Now he and I'm not that I'm not speaking against you know the trappings of the world, right? I'm not here to say that desiring to have nice things is in and of itself bad. But when that becomes the pursuit of your heart, when that becomes why you wake up in the morning, I mean, and I've watched those shows, you know, where, where they got people that say that, you know, nothing, nothing gives me up in the morning like the smell of money. Mm -hmm. Like, ma'am, sir, if the smell of money is what gets you up in the morning, then you, you really need to check your, your heart and mind. Because your your pursuit, your thirst, your hunger is for the wrong thing. Right? Blessed are those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be what? Filled. Not blessed are those that chase after fortune and fame, for they shall be great. No. If we even want to go there. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be added unto you. And and and, and that didn't say that you're going to have the nicest. Right? Shoes are shoes. Food is food. Right? A home is a home. A car is a car. But some people get that twisted and mixed up and try to make it something that it's really not. But that's a that's a another teaching for another time. So, David, who I would suggest, definitely struggled with some, some mind issues, right? David had some moments of deep sorrow and deep sadness. And all throughout the Psalms, he talked about God and his word. And that was the thing that helped him to renew his heart and to renew his mind, right? After he had messed up with Bathsheba, after God had punished him for what he did, he then wrote, created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit, right? So he came to God with this uh, repentance, right? This turning away and asked him to do it again Right? To renew that which was um, messed up. Renew that which was uh, corrupted. In order for him to live the way that he was supposed to live for God. And that's the story of David. David, David is like up one minute, down one minute. Up one minute, down one minute. But he, in all of it, was still, like I said, remembered as having a heart after God. David, just like us, has to, had to, we have to, make sure that we are guarding it against the evils, guarding it against the wickedness, guarding it against the enemy's attacks, because as Paul would later tell us, and I'll get to the scripture, that uh, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty through the pulling down of the strongholds. Right? Look at 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. Because on the tail end of that, he says, We demolish arguments and every pretension that self sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it what? Obedient to Christ. So we talk about being right in our mind. Well, we have to make sure that everything that's floating through our mind 
is obedient to Christ. Right? And so when we have those, those thoughts of anger, those thoughts of fear, those thoughts of jealousy, those thoughts of rage, those thoughts of, of self-harm, we have to take them captive by the Spirit of God and the power of God and make them obedient to Christ. We have to line them up against the Word of God. And when we line them up against the Word of God, we then can see if they are true or not. Amen? So when our minds tell us they don't mean you any good, well, let's see. Or when our minds tell us that we are nothing or, you know, there's something wrong with us or, or whatever the case may be, we can go to God's Word and seek it out and see if it is true. That's a measure, again, of protection for us and for others. And then I love it in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9. The Apostle Paul says, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, Think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. Now, interestingly enough, right, I, I, I made mention about the do not be anxious, right? It said, do not be anxious for anything, but in everything, with prayer, by prayer and petition, make your request known to God and the peace of God as all understanding will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he comes down and he gives another finally. Because before that he said finally. But this is kind of like the finally finally. Right? He's like, all right, I'm done. You know how you know how black Baptist ministers we said, okay, I'm closing. And then there's another close. So that was that was Paul. He was giving like his his final close. He's like, all right, for real, for real, I'm closing. Whatever is true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, praise, or excellent, or praiseworthy. Think about such things. Now, these things are things of God. More specifically, Paul, I believe, is talking about Christ. He's making reference to to Christ, because Christ is all of those things. He is true, he is noble, he is right, he is pure, he is lovely, admirable, he is excellent, and certainly praiseworthy. Nothing really under that would qualify or be categorized as such. And so Paul is telling them, encouraging the church at Philippi to after you have done the prayer and and received the peace of uh, the peace of God, when you think about Christ and you put into practice those things that you've learned, received, and heard and seen, guess what? Not only will you have the peace of God, but you will also have the God of peace, right? Peace of God, the tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation. Peace of God, tranquil state of a soul assured of its salvation. And then you also have the one who gives your soul the tranquil state of peace of salvation. You have that relationship, but it's all, it's all up here. Right? So when our mind is frazzled and, and thinking about the world and all the cares that we have, yeah, there's bills to pay, there's, there's bosses that we got to deal with, there's, again, like I said, the news, I don't even really like watching the news anymore because it's just filled with so much hurt. People, every, every five minutes, there's somebody just got shot or died or 
this place was robbed, or, you know, we're, we're talking about things, you know, this person was sexually assaulted, or, you know, there's not enough money in our education system. People right now uh, in, in the city, in New York, they're fighting for more funding for schools, and in and, and all of these things we get caught up in, and yes, we should uh, be aware of them, but that's not what we should be thinking on, right? Those things aren't true, noble, right, pure, lovely, admirable, excellent, or praiseworthy. Christ is. And so again, the emphasis to those at the church at Philippi was to emulate what they had learned, what they had received, what they had heard and seen in Paul. Because Paul also said, as I follow Christ, follow after me, right? And our lives should be the same exact thing when we are out there and people encounter us, especially if we're in our, you know, wherever our sphere of influence is in, are. So in our homes, on our jobs, at our social activities, wherever that is, we are the representation of Christ in that space. And we are saying in our thinking, in our speaking, and in our living, follow me as I follow Christ. Right? Because we may be the only Bible that they know of. We may be the only uh, uh, representation of Christ that they ever see. Sometimes we only get one shot. So why not make it count? Why not make the difference? Last time I'm in here because Lady K just came down. Praise God. Um, Romans 12 and 2. One of my favorites. And you all should be able to say this. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of what? Your mind. Because the renewing of your mind does what? It, it gives us the ability to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will, right? The foundation, again, is what? Obeying God's will. In order to obey God's will, we have to have a renewed mind. We can't have a reprobate mind and know what the will of God is. Because what may seem right may not actually be right. Remember, Jesus said, you have heard to uh, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you, right? So a reprobate mind still thinks, I, I just gotta love my neighbor. And, and what? who's your neighbor? Neighbor is, is subjective, right? My neighbor could be the person that has the same skin color as me, or has the same political affiliation as me, or has lives on my block. But Jesus said, everyone, all, are the neighbor. But you only know that if you, when you have a renewed mind. So again, it's important that we take care of our physical bodies, um, but that we not exclude our mental body, right? And not exclude our heart and our mind. Because again, that is where all of our decisions are going to be made. And so if we protect the word of God, if we allow God's wisdom to be our guide, then it will, I guarantee it, in my Denzel Washington voice, lead to our wellness. It will, I guarantee you, give you the health and the strength to endure this life. And the last thing is, set your minds on things above or not on earthly things. Right? Well, our mind is focused on our God, on our Christ, and the Holy Spirit. We put ourselves in a great place and position to not only survive, but to thrive. Right? Survival and thriving, two different things. Survival is just day to day. Thriving means that we are growing, developing, maturing into that which God has destined for us to be. 
and become. Thank you all. Amen. Amen and amen. And now I'll bring up our preacher, Lady Kenya. Do whatever you, the Lord told you to do. Yes. Oh my goodness. All right. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for um, waiting for me. Um, I had the pleasure of um, being on a town hall tonight because it's Mental Health Awareness Month. So I was with. Um, Congressman Andy Kim talking about mental health. And so God had put it in my heart for us to talk about that tonight. But it sounds like Pastor was all up in my stuff. <laughs> so maybe I'll take that as confirmation. Um, I talked about a lot. Okay. I think, well, I'm going to too. All right. That just means that we're working together. We didn't really know what we were, each other was talking about at all. I wasn't listening into Bible study because I was. Um, I had the privilege of educating in other ways today, but join me in prayer. God, we thank you. Thank you. We give you glory, we give you honor, we give you praise. Because God, you are all knowing, you are all wise. There is no confusion or shadow of turning in you. You know all things. So we pray, Lord God, that whatever it is you have for us tonight, that you make it clear to us, that you speak to us. Speak, Lord God. Speak through me. Speak to me, God. Take me out of myself. Get me out of the way. You get the glory, you get the honor, you get the praise. Let the words of my mouth, meditation of my heart be acceptable in my sight. O oh Lord, strength and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. All right, so I think this may be a reinforcement of what was already discussed. And if that's the case, just walk with me quickly. Um, this wasn't necessarily a traditional preached word, but God had dropped in my spirit something that I talked about maybe about four years ago. And he was like, you know, rewind that, spin the block, let's talk about it again. Um, and so it's about renewing our mind, right? Okay. So I have a sense that um, my way of delivery is maybe um, more with some practical tools for us to use. And so I'm hoping that these things um, really complement each other. And I'm going to believe God for that on today. Thank you, Lord. So I want us to think about our thoughts, our mind. What have you been thinking about? What has been taking up residence in your mind? What are your daydreams about? When you let your mind wander, what does it go to? Are those thoughts good for you? Are they healthy thoughts? Are they helpful thoughts? Are they godly thoughts? Are they holy thoughts, right? And also, what have you been avoiding thinking about? Mm, right? What have you been ignoring at all costs? What are you trying not to think about? What are you pushing out of your mind immediately? Is it a good thing? Is it a good thing for you to be pushing those thoughts out? Or is it avoidance? Is it denial? Is it fear that won't allow you to face the thought? So I want us to take a deep breath. One, two, three. Out. Does it have magical powers? No, God just gave us breath in our body. Yeah. Sometimes we need to take a deep breath to focus in on what he's telling us, right? And so lately I've been thinking a lot about what's on my mind. What do I spend my time thinking about, right? And I want to, um, Dr. Anita Phillips has this book called The Garden to Grow. And she talks about thoughts and she said, what if we think about thoughts like a plant? A plant in our mind. Right? And so I want us to say in this moment, what is planted in there? What are we allowing to grow? Right? And so where are my thoughts taking me? What's the direction that we're going in with these thoughts? Right? What am I giving my mental and emotional energy to? We want to pay attention to that, right? And so we understand that thinking is a process that God gave us. He allowed us to have a mind, have a brain, to have thoughts, right? But like everything else in the world, when sin came in, what happened to our thoughts and our thinking? Corrupted, right? And so now we need the power of God to renew our mind, to revitalize us, to regenerate our way of thinking, right? 
We have to ask God to show us the places and the spaces where our thinking needs to be changed. So Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of who? We have the mind of Christ. So that means that we have the power to think like our Savior. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Right? And then that means we have the power to live as his representatives. What an amazing gift, right? So let's be clear. This power, this mind of Christ, does not mean that we're manifesting things. Right? Have you been hearing and seeing that a lot lately? Or like you just think about this really hard and boom, here it comes. Because I have the power of my mind. That's not what I'm talking about, right? What I'm talking about is that God has given us the ability through his spirit to see the world as he sees it, to and then to walk in the way that glorifies him, right? So we have to utilize, it's not us doing it. We don't have the power to create, right? I don't care how much I think about a million dollars coming in my hand right now. Mm, I'm really thinking about it all. <laughs> I don't see anything, right? God is the one that creates with his thoughts. <laughs> Right? We don't have that ability. But he does allow us to have the power of himself that resides inside of us, which means that we, through his spirit and through his power, have control over our thoughts. That's the important part, right? So we have to allow God to change our thinking by pointing out the places and spaces where we get things wrong. And we have to give space and room for the spirit to empower us to think about holy things so that we can become more and more like who? Christ. Yeah, like Christ, right? And more and more, our lives begin to reflect God, right? It's about being a reflection of Him, right? And so, you know, out there in the work that I do, right, everything that we do in science, everything that we do in psychology and counseling, all of that is rooted in Jesus really yes. right we don't like to say it we don't like to believe it we think it's all separate but it's not god created the mind god created biology god created our biochemistry god created our brain god created emotions surprise surprise <laughs> right and so it's important that we recognize our thoughts impact our feelings and our feelings inform our actions so what do we need to do with that right what does that even mean? It means that what we spend time thinking about and focusing on feeds us. And it shapes what we do next, right. right? So we need to allow God to show us how to move through what's going on up here. Because truthfully speaking, sometimes a whole lot of stuff can be going on. Am I the only one that feels that way? A whole lot could be going on there. And God has to be the blueprint for us. So it seems like you all were already in Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Is that where you all were? Yeah? Okay. So we can just look at it really quickly, and then I'm going to give us some action steps. Is that okay? All right. So the version I have here says, Finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, <coughs> and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, Whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there's any excellence or anything worthy of praise, think on what? These things. And the Virgin I, said, I have says, think continually on these things. When it says that, what does it mean? It means center your mind on them and plant them in your heart. So I ask you today, what have you been fixing your mind on? What have you been implanting in your heart? What seeds have you allowed to grow in your life, right? What are you working on thinking about? Because actually, do you all know that we have the capacity to interrupt our thinking? We do, right? God is showing us in his word how to do it. He does so in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. It says, the weapons we fight with are not weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have the divine power to demolish, to demolish strongholds. We demolish arguments and every pretension or thought that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive, what? Every thought 
and make it obedient yeah. to Christ. Yes. That's 2 Corinthians yes. 10, a.k.a. that CBT for our therapist folks, right? What does that mean? It's a type of modality of therapy. And really, they don't recognize this, but it's absolutely built on the Word of God. Because what does the Word of God say? The Word of God says that a thought may come up for us. But just because it passes through the brain, it does not mean that it has to take root in Germany. It does not mean that we have to give it space or give it sunlight or give it food or give it water or give it a, allow it to grow. We have the ability to recognize ah, 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 that thought is not from God. And I'm going to take captive. What does that mean? Pull it down. Move it out. Tell that thought you're wrong. You're not true. You don't belong here. You are not welcomed in the mind of Christ. So I ask you today, right? I ask you tonight that when those thoughts are coming up in your mind, right? When those thoughts are presenting themselves and it feels like, oh, I'm powerless in my mind. And listen, I'm not minimizing. Things like anxiety are real things. People can get caught in the um, rumination and the replay. But I have to let us know that God has given us power and he's also given us resources to help move through those things, right? Those thoughts do not have to control us. Our brain does not have to bully us. Our members, including our brain, can be brought into submission. That's important for us to recognize. So does that mean that mental health concerns aren't real? Absolutely not. They are real. Just like medical concerns are real. But you know what is more real? You know what is more true? You know what is eternal and everlasting? The Word of God. That remains the same. It is unchanging. It's unmovable. So we are going to have to take the time and tell ourselves, including our own thoughts, not today, friend. I'm not doing that today. Not today. If that means I have to call my therapist today because I don't want to go there today, that's what I'm going to do. If that means I need to get down on my knees and pray right now because um, this thought is trying to take root and I'm pulling up the weed every time it shows up, that's what I got to do. If it means I got to call my prayer partner, talk to my pastor, call Lady K, that's what I got to do. If it means I got to distract myself or constantly reaffirm the word of God by saying who I am, I am a new creation. I am forever forgiven. I am more than a conqueror. I am an overcomer. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That is a lie from the devil. God does love me. Jesus was sent here to save me. Whatever you got to do, you got to interrupt that thought. Because that's actually what we have the power to do. So I need us to practice asking ourselves these things. When a thought shows up, you can take a note, you can record it, or ask me later, or just listen, right? When a thought shows up, and you're like, mm, I don't know about that thought, you need to ask yourself, is that thought holy? Is it true? Yeah, yeah. Is this thought how God sees me? Is this thought how God sees the person I'm thinking of? Or is this thought how God sees this situation? Ask yourself, did this thought come from God? Does this thought line up with the word of God? Does this thought glorify God? Does this thought look like, sound like Jesus? Yes. That's what we have to actually ask ourselves. Whose thought is this? Because if it's not from the mind of Christ, there's really one other option. And if it's rebellious, then we have to teach our thoughts to obey Christ. You have to teach your anxious thoughts to obey Christ. You have to train your sad and depressed brain to obey Christ. Those thoughts that are just finding them, your, their way, those impulsive thoughts, those thoughts that are intrusive, you don't even want to think about that. You're not sure how it got there. Maybe you lived through something and that thought just shows up out of nowhere because you're triggered. I'm not saying you're bad because that thought. I'm saying when you see the thought, you have a choice. Do you let the thought grow and reproduce or do you pull up the weed? Yes. That's what I'm asking us tonight. I'm saying that's our part. The Holy Spirit gives us clarity to see the thought. Right? In my world, we would call it an automatic thought. Those of us who 
you've been to therapy or know anything about it, you've heard that. That sometimes a thought just whoop, pops up. It's called an automatic thought. And we can get so used to automatic thoughts that we never question them. Yeah. That's the concern. Right? So when the automatic thought shows up, it is our job because the Spirit says, oh, look at that. Not to just say, I know, I can't help it. Our thought, our job, our action, when the Spirit says, look at that thought, is say, you write, God, what do I do about it? You write, God, show me what to say. You write, God, what is the evidence that this is true or not? What does your word say about this, God? What do I believe? What do I know to be true, Lord? Okay, so you know what that's called? You've now interrupted the automatic thought. And then you are challenging that thought. Right. That thought is not from God. And every time it shows up in any form it comes, as far as it gets, you challenge that thought. Nope, you are not from God. This is not for my Savior. He did not say that about me. He does not want me to engage in that behavior. He does love me. No, I don't need this to feel better. That feeling better will only last a short while because it's not actually better. No, the true high is actually in Christ Jesus. So at this point, you see the thought, you interrupt the thought, and then you bring it captive or you challenge that thought. You say, uh-uh, because you've asked your questions. Is it true? Is it from God? Is it holy? Is it how God sees me? When you've done that work, right, then you are throwing that thought out every time. Yes. You don't belong yes. here. This brain belongs to God. You don't belong here. You are not welcome here. My mind is the temple of the Most High. You have to go. You, you are not welcomed in this brain. You are not welcome here. You do not belong. Anxiety is not who I am. It is something that I struggle with. And every time you show up anxiety, we fit a tussle. You don't belong here. Depression, this is not your house. You are intruding on my space, depression. Because God gave me power over this. So in the name of Jesus, even though tears are streaming, you got to go depression. You don't own me. You don't belong here. I don't belong to you. I belong to the Most High God. I'm a child of the King. I know who I am. I am a friend of God. He thought of me and he gave his life for me. I'm worth saving. So I am no, I am not alone. That's a lie from the pit. I What are we feeding? 
What are we consuming? So I'm so grateful on tonight that God is a God of all wisdom, that God, he just works so, I don't even have a word for it, like just, he works all things together for good. And there's clearly a message that he wanted to give tonight to us. I pray that it passed through it was in line with what you brought forth and connected. And I just want to encourage someone tonight that your thoughts, they don't run you. You, with the power of God inside of you, actually have the authority of Christ. That power that Jesus utilized to raise him from the dead, that power resides in you if you are a believer. What is more powerful than someone being able to be brought back to life? Like, what more power do we need? We have everything we need. We just have to make it a pattern. We have to do it consistent. We have to bind it around our neck. We have to write it on the tablets of our heart. We got to say it over and over and over. Even if the first time you say it, you're not so sure. Maybe you're like, I don't know if this is sticking. You say it again. You say it again. You say it again. You say it again. You tell your heart again. You remind yourself again. You say it again and again. And you do it every single time. And when you get tired of doing that, because that thought keeps showing up, do it again. Do it anyway. Say, God, give me the strength. Help me to overcome this, oh God. God, give me a testimony that one day this won't be a part of my journey. But God, if that's not my testimony, teach me how to walk with this thought, throw it out every step of the way. God, make me who I'm supposed to be. Renew my heart. Renew my mind. Every single day, give me the mind of Christ. Renew this mind, oh God, and use it for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen, fam. Amen. What an awesome, awesome, awesome word. Um, it certainly, I, I would say, was in line. I, I, dare I say it was an enhancement to what was shared. Uh, I feel, feel like I was just kind of setting the, the groundwork for for, for, for what, uh, what was shared. I'm glad I went first. Uh, uh, yeah, because I would not want to come behind that. But thank God uh, that the Lord had a clear message for our house. Yes. And those that are, are mm -hmm. online and perhaps those that will listen to this at some point um, <coughs> that God clearly cares about, like I said, our, our physical health, but, but He also cares about our mental health. He cares yes. about our mind and He wants us to be healthy uh, mind, body, and soul. Right? We're supposed to love Him with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our soul, right? Yes. We're supposed to love him with everything. And so we want those things to be in harmony and in unity with one another. And so I pray that this word tonight has helped uh, someone. It certainly helped me. I will say that. If it didn't help anyone else, it helped me uh, in my, uh, my, my life, my, my journey, my, my uh, living for Jesus. And so I'm thankful again to the okay. Uh, for being obedient to God and doing what he tasked her to do tonight. We are not um, we are not um, going to miss a moment right to extend the invitation. Uh, even though you know we're, we're here um, it's it's part of the process right we don't dare uh, disrespect our Lord and, and not offer an invitation to Christ even if we are amongst believers. Um, that is just uh, our practice. So uh, if there's anyone here or here uh, that doesn't know Jesus our Savior, we want to offer you the opportunity to give your heart, to give your mind, to give your soul to Him because He loves you. Yeah. He loves you. He made you and He desires to be in an eternal relationship with you. Beyond this world, beyond all time, He wants you. So, take consideration to that. And for those of us here that are saved, 
think on these things. Think on what's been shared. And allow that to minister to you, not only for the remainder of this week, um, but even throughout the year. Refer back to this moment when things get tough, when times get hard, when you are challenged. Remember the words that were shared here tonight as an encouragement to continue to press forward, to continue to endure, to continue to trust in God with everything you've got. Uh, again, I'm so appreciative and thankful for God's grace and mercy to us tonight, and He offered us this opportunity to come and share like we did. Um, we do have one quick announcement. Tomorrow night, we will be over at Community Baptist Church in Somerset, New Jersey, uh, as we celebrate or participate, celebrate and participate in a uh, um, Middlesex Central Baptist Association Sydney Annual Session. Um, so again, that's Community Baptist Church uh, right there in Somerset off of New Brunswick Avenue and DeMont. Um, literally 10 minutes from our church. Um, so please, man, please sir, avail yourself of that. Uh, we'll also, God willing, be back here on Sunday to hear a word from the Lord. And so I pray that he will keep and carry us uh, from this day uh, until we can meet again. Um, I believe that's it. I'm going to ask Lady Kay to give us our benediction and closing remarks that she may have. Again, I'm thankful and grateful to see you all and pray God's blessings upon your life. We can sing. This is um, a passage from the Garden Within as well that is just resonating with me. I'm good holding on to it. It says, Healed hearts can quiet troubled minds. So, God, today we ask that you would heal our heart. Heal us from our grief, heal us from our fear. Heal us from our anxiety. Heal us from our trauma, from our past. Heal us from our insecurities. Heal us from our family concerns, our financial concerns, oh God. Heal us from those secret things that we don't even want to say out loud, oh God. Heal our pain, oh God. Heal that sin-sick soul and nature in us, oh God. We pray, Lord God, that you would be bringing healing to us, oh God, so that we can do those things that you've set before us to interrupt those thoughts that are not like you, so that our thought life doesn't negatively impact our witness or our worship, oh God. We thank you, God, that you've given us a pathway to you. We thank you, God, that you made people, humans, in your image, oh God, for you are the Trinity, God in three persons, Lord God, and we're grateful, and yet you created humans, mind, body, and soul. We're grateful that we get to mirror you, oh God, so we pray that by your divine spirit, that you would heal those pieces in us, that we would begin to meet, truly mirror and reflect who you are, who you call us to be in this world. We pray, Lord God, for any quiet um, prayer. We intercede on behalf of those around us in this room, those that might be online, our family members, our friends, Lord God, those that are our neighbors, those that we work with, Lord God, those that we might not even know in our neighborhoods, in our communities, and in our state, oh God. We pray on behalf of so many people that are hurting, that are struggling, oh God. We pray, God, that tonight, that you would change us, God. May we not walk past anyone. God, if we hear your voice and you tell us to speak to someone, to offer a word of encouragement, a financial gift, a food gift, Lord God, that if you tell us to smile and say hello, we will listen to you, oh God, because we don't know when we are entertaining angels unaware. We don't know when someone needs that encouragement because they feel like they are lost or alone in this world, oh God. May no one feel alone when they are in our presence because may, Lord God, we exude the very presence of the Almighty God when we walk into spaces. May folks know that they are loved, that they are cared for, and that there is a way out called salvation that you created for us so that we can have eternal life with you. 
we give your name glory, honor, and praise because you are worthy. We thank you even now, Lord God. I thank you even now, Lord God. I'm so grateful on tonight, God, for what you've done, but most importantly, for who you are. Thank you, oh God, that even in my shortcoming tonight, feeling harried and rushed, you still spoke, God, and I received that message even for myself on tonight. Yes, it's God. not me. It's not Kalisha that gets the glory. You, God, had a message for us, and we receive it. We apply it to our lives on tonight in the name of Jesus. Take us home safely from this place, but never from your presence, oh God. May we dwell with you and to call us home and may we dwell with you in whatever form that will be in heaven, Lord God. Thank you. We praise you in Jesus' name. We stay together. Amen. Amen. Amen.